Now we all know what kind of theme the Zelda games have. Usually it's something medieval, although this time with Breath of the Wild it was a little bit different. But nonetheless, one type of item was still seen in the game, shields, which always play a big role in the Zelda titles. However, after all these years of using millions of shields to defeat every foe imaginable, we at least have to look at them to figure out which ones are the best. It's quite logical, right? And of course this will be based on the story behind it, its looks, and usability in the game. So let's dive in right away. Number 5 now, everyone who watches this channel often knows that I'm not a big fan of Skyward Sword. It's just very lackluster in my opinion. Which was confirmed for me once again when I played it on stream a while ago. I just find the game tedious, slow and very frustrating. By the way, I stream here on YouTube every Thursday and Friday. You can find the schedule for that in the community tab of the channel. Anyways, while it isn't my favorite Zelda game ever, obviously, there are some things I do like about this title. One of which is the ability to upgrade items, with the shields being a highlight for sure. And so the Iron Shield and its more advanced versions end up on number 5. Although the others in the game also look really good. Now this type of shield is known as a Tower Shield, which are meant to cover a big area and defend the user almost completely. The shield bears two symbols that resemble footprints, possibly those of a Loftwing, and it can be bought from the gear shop at the Skyloft Bazaar for 100 rupees. And compared to the wooden shield that you used before, the iron variant is more durable and does not burn when it comes into contact with fire. But sadly enough, it does conduct electricity. Personally, I think these are the best looking ones out there in the wide world. They are by far my favorite style. So it already does a good job in this category, but it doesn't end there because you can upgrade it making it even better and also better looking, turning it into the fortified and later on reinforced shield, becoming a rectangular wall that can stop almost anything seen in the game. And in the end, you have a beautiful looking shield that's very effective as well. And I gotta say, I love it. Number four. Now, while the shields seen in Skyward Sword are fun and quite good looking, they don't have any mystical qualities. And no, I'm not talking about some crazy powers here. Oh no, I'm talking about the story behind them, which is barely there. But this can't be said about the Ordon shield from Twala Princess. This thing is seen in the background of the game often, and sometimes it's even center stage, being mentioned by other characters a lot throughout the game, and even plays a big role in the game's introduction. And it all comes to a head during the night of the invasion on Ordon Village. And that's because the villagers plan on using the Ordon shield and the Ordon sword that Russell crafted to fend off the incoming monsters. Two items that you have seen and heard about from the very beginning of the game, giving them some sort of mystical quality. Now to meet Midna's demands, you enter the house where it's stored from the roof and steal the shield from the wall. And so it becomes your very first shield in the game, which will always remind you of where this whole adventure actually started. And since this shield is clearly made out of wood, it can catch on fire. And if this happens and the flames on it are not put out in time, you will be permanently unable to obtain another one. There is only one of them in the game. Sure, you can still get a visually different, yet functional, identical wooden shield from the shop at Kakariko Village or Death Mountain, but it won't be the same. And that's what makes this shield so cool. In the beginning of the game, you learn about it and it gets built up. Eventually, you get it, but if you mess up, you will also lose this one-of-a-kind shield that is supposed to represent your hometown. In general, I like the idea behind it the most, but its design is still pretty nice as well but not compared to a lot of other ones seen in the series. It's mostly the idea behind it that makes it a great item. Number three. Now we all know what the main purpose of a shield is, protecting you from incoming attacks of all kinds like arrows, swords, hammers, punches and more. But there are many things it can do. However, a certain special shield seen in some of the Zelda games does have one interesting new power. I'm of course talking about the famous Mirror Shield, something that is a staple of the Legend of Zelda titles. And the most famous one is probably the version seen in Ocarina of Time. Here it's found in the Spirit Temple, and unlike the normal Hylian shield you use in the game, this personal wall of defense has a polished surface. 
allowing you to reflect light, and some other things, which actually allows you to do a lot of fun stuff, like solving light puzzles in dungeons, or reflecting back some magical attacks. Nintendo even decided to use it for special puzzles seen in certain dungeons. Usually it involves deflecting light or magic to open some door or activate something, which other shields can't really do. And all of this plays an especially big role in defeating Twin Rova, the final boss of the Spirit Temple. Here you use the mirror shield to reflect any incoming attack from the sisters, like the fire or ice beam. And later on when they combine into one form, you need to use your mighty mirror shield to absorb Twin Rova's energy again and again and again. And after three of the same type of energy are absorbed by it, a beam of that element is fired, which will stun Twin Rova, allowing you to strike. Overall, this is quite a fun fight, and this whole dungeon shows off what the shield is good for, deflecting certain things mostly. And in other Zelda titles, it usually has a similar role. And I think it's a good looking shield that has a fun role in most games. It's like some sort of special magical shield that allows you to deal with magic casters. It serves a different role compared to all the others, and I dig it, and its unusual design is outstanding, and some of the best we have ever seen in the series. Clearly, it's very memorable. Number 2. Alright, now we all know there's one shield that none of us will ever forget. It has always played a huge role in the games after all, and I'm of course talking about the Hylian shield. This one is a classic that every Zelda fan immediately recognizes, but while we all know about it, it is quite boring. We have seen this design game after game, so it won't surprise us anymore, but it still looks pretty good. It's the traditional shield used by the Knights of Hyrule, and is commonly used by Link in almost every 3D Zelda game. The thing is made of steel, light as a feather, and extremely sturdy, making it an optimal weight for a fighter with a one-handed weapon. However, there's one thing that makes it stand apart from all the other shields seen in these games. You can't really destroy it. The first one was even a legendary shield guarded by the Thunder Dragon Lanayru. This already says enough. And in games like Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild, we really notice what its powers are. Sure, in some titles it can break after literally a million years, but overall it's really hard to destroy one of these things. So in games like Breath of the Wild, this is my go-to shield. It just works really well and is stupid strong. And obtaining it in this title is fun. The shield can be found in the basement of Hyrule Castle, where you first have to beat a Hinox in order to get it, which is a fun challenge. And I mean, let's be honest, how can you not use this shield in Zelda games? It's an icon of the franchise and shows off the pride of Hyrule, making this one an absolute classic. Number 1 now we get to our number one, a shield worthy of a champion while also being extremely special compared to all the others seen in the series. And the crazy thing is, this one is from the most recent Zelda game, which showed off some quite interesting technology. Items, weapons, shields and robots, all made using advanced technology created by the Sheikah tribe from 10,000 years ago. And in this set, we also encountered a couple of interesting shields being wielded by different levels of Guardian Scouts, who used them to beat the hero Link. And there's one version among them called the Guardian Shield Plus Plus that is so incredibly cool looking and powerful that I want to have it in real life. Which, sadly enough, as you can imagine, is impossible. The output level of this one has been boosted to maximum and so its combat capabilities surpass those of a metallic shield, while also having one extremely powerful attribute. Thanks to the power of the shield, it can actually deflect Guardian Scout laser beams, which is really useful as you can imagine. And to be honest, there isn't really any other shield like it in a game. No other one can do this as far as I know, unless you deflect it back with good timing. Then you can even do it with a really bad wooden one. However, while its power and abilities are really good and useful, there's one more thing that makes it even better. How the shield actually deploys when you equip it. Because it's just a small rectangle, but then it becomes a lot bigger. Because of the blue plasma that pops out, forming the shield. In my opinion, that little animation looks incredibly cool. Similar to a lightsaber, for example. The sound and look of it all makes it more badass. In general, it also reminds me a lot of the plasma weapons from the Halo series. There, they also have shields and swords that function similar to the ancient weapons of Zelda. And both 
look absolutely amazing and are really strong to say the least. But now we have finally arrived at the end of this video. You know which shields in the Zelda franchise are my absolute favorite. However, be sure to tell me what your favorites are and why. Just let me know down there in the comments. And then I will see all of you in the next video. But be sure to check the videos in the upper right corner, subscribe and click the bell button, and leave a funny little comment.